So our, our next speaker today is, uh, is David Nelms from Active Group. And um, since uh, um, David set up Active Group and, uh, and sold it, he's uh, come back and um, is exploring how new technologies can, uh, can, can evolve and uh, influence the business. So uh, very excited to hear what David has to say. Thank you. Well, thank you, Guy. And my presentation will pop up here in a minute. When we first say, uh, well, I'm pretty hot, pretty loud. Sorry, pretty loud, not pretty hot. Um, it's great to be here. I know everyone comes in and it sounds kind of funny to say, hey, it's really great to be here. But when you say, it's really great to be here. So what I want to talk about today are a number of things. Um, let me give you a little bit of background to me, 30 seconds or so. Uh, started off in, uh, been in research on my life. My father started a full service firm 40 years ago. Um, Hannah Michael 50 firm for a while, so there was some consolidation. Probably a Hannah Michael 60 company now, CTO of that company for a while. Started this company called Active Group, which allows you to video stream from traditional facilities all around the world, watch it live, watch it on demand. We have 1,200 rooms around the world we're hooked up to now. And I'm married to a focus group moderator, so I'm in bed with the business. So. Well, you can imagine what happens when I come home and I say to my wife, Qual Monkey. Not Survey Monkey, Qual Monkey. It was not a good night that night. So, what do I mean by this? Well, I'm going to get into this in a little bit, and what we're going to have to do is have a little bit of context and, and work our way to this Qual Monkey thing. I'm going to give you a little bit of past, I'm going to give you a little bit of future, a little bit of present. When Lenny came to me a number of months ago and said, I want you to come talk about the future of research because you've done this before with CASRO, you've done this with ARF. I want you to talk about the future of research. I said, great, how much time do I have? Fifteen minutes. So that's not a lot of time to talk about the future. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to focus on just the subset of the future, just the qualitative part, some a little quantitative, but mostly qualitative. And we're going to talk mobile, we're going to talk other stuff. We've got a lot of stuff here. This is not about me, this is not about Active Group. This will not be a sales presentation for Active Group. I want you to think about the stuff I'm telling you. We'll have some mobile in here as well. Mobile's in its infancy, we know that. We're hearing that all the time. But as a society, we can't live without it. And I'm not going to read this next clip, and you probably can't read it anyway. But basically, there was a survey done, and what happened was, they asked people, what would you rather lose, your wedding ring or your phone? Most people said their wedding ring. My kids are 15 and 18 years old, and I sometimes tried once to have something called a digital Sabbath, which means on Sunday we don't use our phones. That didn't work. Then I tried to have a digital Sabbath lunch. For lunch, we put all our phones right here, and we don't touch them. We talk and we interact. It didn't really work. We are just getting started with this stuff, just in the infancy. The, um, so where are we going to go? When you look ahead a few years, what will you see? Again, a graph on, everyone's got a graph. Mine's cool because it's kind of sideways and it's got round bars instead of uh, square bars. Um, and all you're talking about here is for G20 companies, G20 um, countries, fixed versus mobile broadband connections to the internet. So in 2015, this is not a long time away, 2015, 1.7 billion consumer broadband internet connections. Look at the growth. That's a lot. That's my only chart. All right, let's talk about this, the past. Data used to be scarce, and market research had all the data. If you wanted to know something, you go to the men in their white coats or their these people you pay all this money into and say, I need to learn something. Tell me what I need to do. Here's my product. Tell me. Well, data used to be scarce. But now the data is everywhere. We know that. And the data is coming from everywhere. We know this too. It's been doing this for a while. This is not a new thing. Phones, tablets, and let me stop right there. If anybody thinks this is the future of mobile, you are dead wrong. This is the beginning of mobile. All right? Tablets and phones, what we have in five years is not going to look anything like this. Even Google doesn't know. Apple knows, but they won't tell us. All right. <laughs> Smart TVs. That's not mobile, but again, technology to be aware of. Again, talking about Apple. 
They're going to release this Apple TV this year, most likely. It's been talked about for a number of years. There's a good chance it'll do to TV what the iPhone has done to the telecommunications industry. Augmented reality glasses. You've heard about this already, the Google glasses. Clothes. Well, nobody's talking about clothes as mobile computing devices, but this stuff's going to come. Cars. Now, we have cars that have GPSs and things like that, but I drove a 2013 BMW yesterday, had four cameras in it, one in the front, one in the back, and one on each side. Now, that's for safety, but a camera could be used for anything. Geolocation, we've talked about this a lot. Feedback advertising. Now, what the, what the heck is that? What if you would look at an ad, digital ads like, in a subway station or walking down a pedestrian mall, and that ad had a camera in it, and that ad could register your emotional reaction to that ad, whether you liked it or you didn't. And then based on how many real-time responses that ad gets, that ad changes over time to get better responses. Feedback advertising. So what will the next device be? We're not sure. I've got one of them in my pocket. What is this? This is a contact lens. Now stay with me here. It's not too hard to imagine that at some point in the future, we will have digital contact lenses with internet connections. You think, no way, right? No way. Well, I just put that out there, and last night I was going to say it'll take 10 years, 15 years. But I happened to look on CNN today, and I did a search for digital contact lenses. Well, they did that last year. They've actually tested digital contact lenses on rabbits. Unbelievable. And when this army of rabbits that have broadband-enabled digital contacts take over the world, there's no stopping them. But you just never know what's going to happen. There's all this stuff out there. You as researchers need to be aware of what's coming. I don't know which way it's going to go. I can't predict the future. That's one of the nice things about doing a talk like this, you don't exactly have to be right all the time. You have to be right if, you, if you're someone that says, well, sir, I'm your doctor and I think the surgery will go well today. But other than that, you don't have to do a great job of predicting the future. You have to lay out what's out there and go from there. Now, again, this is a mobile conference. But just because you're mobile, well, let me don't forget my contact, just because you're mobile doesn't necessarily get rid of all face-to-face. -face. This does not replace everything. You have cultures, and we've heard about emerging markets. We've have, we have cultures where face-to-face -face is the primary way people communicate. I don't think that's going to change. Mobile can augment that. And yes, you may still have to use land rovers, like one of the guys said yesterday, to go out, but you can capture this data in a different way. So where is it going? I think, and this is not just my thought, this is something that a lot of people are thinking, that market research is transforming from the asking stage to the observational stage. We're watching people more. We're asking less. We're inferring information based on that. And observational media is everywhere. You know, phones, all types of mobile devices. And one of the things, here's my only plug for my company, one of the things we do is we aggregate all this data for our clients. We are almost a private YouTube for market research, where if you're a client of ours, you can log in and see every focus group you've ever done, every IDI, and you can run all kinds of tools and analytics on it. So now what? Well, you have to manage all that data. So we really have three things going on here. You have all of this data over here coming in from all these devices, you know, mobile phones, um, tablets, rabbit contact lenses, all this stuff coming in. And then you have the central place where you've got to manage all this data. All right? And then the next step over here is to have all the tools to deal with it. All right? So it's a number of things that are involved in doing all this. We have a product like that. Qualview has one. Civicom has one. There's got to be a way to manage all this data. And let's not get too enamored of the fact that we have all this data because then holy cow, we have all this data, now we've got to do something with it, right? It's great to say we have 25 million touch points of information, but who's going to go through all that? So the next logical thing to happen, and again, this is present for some of you. This is past for maybe a few. This is a little bit of the future for some of you. And like for some of you, like I don't know what the hell he's talking about yet, okay? 
But once you have this cloud space, this base camp of information where all of your stuff lives, then you have the tools to work on it, whether those are text analytic tools, video analytics, emotional analytics, uh, image walls, uh, things like, you know, I had this great idea. I came back from a conference and I had this, I told Brian Sykes, who works with me, I said, I had this great idea for a way we could just take all these images and concept boards and just drag them all together and researchers could look at it and figure out what it means. And he goes, oh, you mean like Pinterest? I missed that one. <laughs> Brian had it. Excuse me, let me, these waters are all used. Where's my water? Well, I'm, I'll go without it. Um, so the other thing is, so you've got all this content, you're going, to have a, you're going to have, or maybe you have now, a place to work with it all, and you're going to have all the tools to work with it. All right. it, make it. It doesn't get rid of everything, but it makes it easier. And then the fact that we are, thank you very much, the fact that we are global in scope as far as how our organizations work, allow people all over the world to interact with each other and do this work together almost a micro social networking feature. So this is great. What's the problem? What's the problem with this? Well, it gets back to what I was talking about at the very beginning of this speech. Depends on who you are. Brian Sykes and I, who works with me, and if you haven't met him before, he's the guy that won the iPad last night on the rock, paper, scissors game. Obviously, I hire very intelligent people that work at Active Group. We talk a lot about making our products easier for our customers, easier to use. And we have a lot of ideas about how to do this, how to make the product pipeline very full, and again, from a qualitative standpoint. And we've come upon certain things we could do that make the qualitative process so easy that anybody can do it. Well, that's great, right? Well, if you're a researcher and they don't need you, maybe it's not great. It depends on who you are. If you're the client, that's great, you don't need the researcher. Well, maybe, who's going to tell you what to do with it? But we need to avoid this, okay? This is a real book, except I changed the word marketing to qualitative. So there is a book out there already that says Marketing Research Kit for Dummies. If you didn't know that, you should feel a little less comfortable than you did just a moment ago. We, do, we want to avoid that. and. We have to think about this in an analogy of like uh, the stockbroker, the investor, 20 years ago. 20 years ago, if you had $10,000 and wanted to invest it, you would go to a stockbroker and go, here's my money, tell me what to do. You have all the data, you have all the knowledge, tell me what to do. And he'd come back and tell you. And then this little company called Charles Schwab came along and said, you know, we could just let those customers do it for themselves. We could charge less and they can do whatever they want. Now, in this context, the stockbroker is the market research agency, and the client is the, or the customer, the investor, is the, um, the client, excuse me, the client and the investor is the um, end client. Sorry, I lost my train of thought for a second. So now we have the situation where, as a researcher, we have to deliver more than just information, more than just data. And what you have to do, you have to evolve. If you're going to live in this community, compete in this industry, you're going to have to evolve or die. All right? And I've said this for years. I said this 1999. We had an ad that said evolve or die. It irritated some people, so we took it away. But research done without, by people with no market research skills are continuing to change the game, just like SurveyMonkey does. All right? SurveyMonkey's out there. We can't make it go away. It makes us, it irritates our our feeling of ourselves, qual monkeys coming, all right? And so you need to do more than just provide insight. That's what we do now. You need, as we get more and more of this data, you need to lift yourself up and do more than just saying, well, here's what we learned. I mean, what's the difference between a market research agency and a consultant. A research agency says, well, we did all this research, we did all this analysis, and here's all the graphs, and here's all the banners and the tabs, that'll be $10,000. A consultant says, well, we studied all this, here's what you should do, $50,000, all right? Big difference. So the most successful people in the future are gonna be the people that can tell you what to do in the future. Foresight, not just insight, foresight. 
And that is going to, what's going to separate us as professionals, whether we're researchers on the client side or on the supplier side. That's what's going to separate us from the qual monkey people and the survey monkey people. Foresight. Think ahead. Don't tell them what they have just learned. Tell them what they need to think about in the future based on what you've learned. Thank you very much.